What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchUpEssentials.com back with another SketchUp layout tutorial for you. So I've gotten a few questions about creating details in layout. I want to do kind of a quick overview of a few ways you could create those details. Um, I'm also going to link to a couple videos below from Nick Sonder and SketchUp about how he creates his details. Those are going to be really useful for you as well. And finally, I'm also going to link to the SketchUpEssentials.com slash layout. Um, that's my layout resources page where there's more information about working with layout. So links to some different resources, some different tutorials, all those different things to help you create plans within SketchUp. Now let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so the first thing I wanted to talk about is the way that you create your details. And uh, the details that I'm using in my example here are details that I've downloaded from the 3D Warehouse. Um, so they're both details from the International Masonry Institute who has uh, several great um, basically detailed drawings of the way that things would come together. So they show all the like flashings and copings and everything else that would go in a masonry assembly. So if you want to check those out, just make sure you check out the International Masonry Institute on the 3D Warehouse. And I will link to these models in the notes down below as well. So the first thing I wanted to discuss is how you're going to create your detailed models that are going to go into layout. Because generally speaking, when you're modeling like a building, like a house, you're not going to model to this level of detail within that actual building because it would take forever. You'd literally be modeling every single nut and bolt. And uh, there's really no reason to get to that level of detail um, for any kind of construction document. So generally speaking, what you're going to do instead is if you decide that you need to build like a 3D mock-up or something like this that really shows that level of detail, you're probably going to model it separately from your actual building model. So, and Nick Sonder talks a lot about that in the video that I uh, that I linked to. So he's going to talk about kind of his workflow, but he never models to this level of detail in his actual building model. So that's kind of the first thing is you're probably going to create a 3D model separately um, from uh, from the rest of your model for these actual details. So you can see this is a great detail. It's got um it's got all the flashing and you can see how everything kind of overlaps and it cuts through to show the blocking. So these are really great details for illustrating conditions. And so the first kind of detail that I'm going to show you how to make is I'm going to show you how to create a detail um, that basically shows this in 3D. And so what we're going to do is we're going to take this model and we're just going to create a view that shows um, this basic detail from the view that we want. So in this case, probably kind of a top down so you can see all the masonry, the reinforcing, the steel, all of that different stuff. And then once we have a view that we like, we're just going to go up to view, animation, and we're going to add a scene. And so basically when you add a scene, what you're doing is you're locking in this view. And so probably what I would do is I would go down to my scenes manager and I would rename this something like, um, we'll call this coping perspective. And so there's nothing really special to this view other than it has kind of the angle that I want. And uh, you could come in here and probably what I'm going to do is I'm gonna go up and I'm gonna apply a hidden line style to this. Um, but I'm also going to come in here and I'm going to turn the details back or the I'm going to turn the materials back on within the styles section. So I just went to the edit tab and first of all I clicked on hidden line, but then I went to edit and I went into the materials section and I clicked on the display shaded using texture option. The other thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn my axes off in here. And I'm gonna go ahead, in this case, I'm gonna save this in my hidden line style. I wouldn't always recommend doing it. In fact, I'm actually gonna click on this plus button and we'll call this hidden line with materials because we might actually use the hidden line style for something else. And so you can see how this basically gives us this 3D view of this. And if you wanted to, you could turn on your profiles so that you'd have a little bit more line work in here. And you can see how whenever I make a change, you get this little update style pair of arrows in here. And so you can click on this to update that style with those changes. And then once I've made all of those changes, I would just update my view by right clicking on it and clicking update and then I would save my model. And then once I've saved my model, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over into layout and I'm going to create 
you'll either have a sheet created or you're going to um, open up layout and it's going to ask you to select a template. So in this case, I have a template that I've created in the past. I will try to link to my video about title blocks where I also talk about saving a title block page as a template. But in this case, I'm just going to use my template file. And so that's just my plan sheet. You, you might have your own plan sheet in here that you would use. But in this case, I'm just gonna do a file, insert, and I'm gonna navigate to that model, and I'm just gonna insert a viewport from that model. And so you can see how I've got this brought in here, and now I can kind of uh, adjust the sizing and the location. And basically, you can tell that this is just a 3D view that I brought in from my model and it's not to scale. And so I will note that at the moment, if I was to go into my SketchUp model section, you can see how it won't let me scale this or set this to a scale because it's in perspective view. So if you want to set this to an actual scale, so you're adding measurements or anything like that, you're gonna have to turn perspective off um, so you would just go over to SketchUp, you would go to Camera, and you would change this view to Parallel Projection. So in this case, I don't really think you need to do that because all you're doing is you're creating a 3D view that you can then come in and add notes like, like if you were to put in something like Metal Parapet Cap here, you could do something else down here with your Rigid Insulation. I'm probably not gonna be adding a whole lot of dimensions to this particular view. But then what I would do is I have created or I have saved as a scrapbook some plans that I've done before. And basically those are just, uh, those are basically just SketchUp files that I've created in the past, but I can come down in my scrapbook section and I can drag something in. So in this case, what I would do is I would just drag my title in here from this other scrapbook that I have in here. But if you uh, don't have any of that, you can go down to like the TB plane or one of these other scrapbooks and drag one of these in here instead. So in this case, I would just come in here and I would just double click on my text and I could just edit my text. So I could call this metal coping perspective. And probably what I would need to do is adjust this a little bit just by double clicking in here and just adjusting the size and for my scale in this case I would note not to scale and then you could come in here and you could adjust these uh, detail numbers to whatever you want them to be but you can see how that's a good way to create a perspective view and so the next thing you could do is you could create another scene in here with like a straight up and down view so in this case you could probably just click on um, whichever one of these standard views kind of makes the most sense so in this case for me it's the left view and you'll notice that this is all kind of going towards a vanishing point. So what we want to do is we want to go to our camera and turn on parallel projection. And when we turn on parallel projection, what that's going to do is that's going to make this kind of a straight um, forward and back view. And so what we would do is you could adjust this however you wanted to. So you could adjust, you could, for example, come in here and you could do the hidden line style without materials if you wanted to. I kind of like leaving the materials in here. But once you have this the way that you want it, then you can right click and you can add another scene. And in this case, we could call this scene um, coping elevation. And then we would just right click and we would update this. We would do a file save. And then in this case, what I would do is I would go over into layout and instead of inserting a new viewport, I would just hold the control key and click and drag. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna duplicate your viewport on this page. So you can see how I was able to duplicate this viewport instead of um, going in and doing all the relinking and everything else. And one thing you might wanna do because we're gonna select our new scene is you may need to go in and either right click on this and click update model reference, or you may need to go up to file document setup and then click on your uh, SketchUp file. You can see how it says it's out of date because that file's been saved and you can just click update. 
And when you click update, what that's gonna do is that's gonna go back and that's gonna update all of the information in here. And I'm gonna move this up with the arrow keys just to make everything line up a little bit better. But now you can come in here and right click on this, go down to your scenes, and you could select your coping elevation view. And in this case, this actually looks like it might be a little bit wide. You know what, we'll leave it here for right now. So what we're gonna do is we're going to adjust our scale. So we're gonna click on this viewport, we're gonna go up to our SketchUp model section and click the drop down for scale. And note that if you didn't turn perspective off, this won't work, but we're gonna try one inch equals one foot. See, so that's a little bit small, so we'll go one more. We'll do one and a half inch equals one foot. Whoops. And so you can see that now I have this detail in here from my other page. And so one thing that's kind of a good idea when you're doing this is you may wanna put all of your uh, you may want to put all of your annotation on its own layer. So in this case, I'm just going to go down to layers and click the plus button and I'm just going to add a layer for annotation. And then I'm going to right click on these and I'm going to put move to layer annotation and I'm going to move those to the top. And so that way, and the other thing I might do is I might change the style of that annotation so that it has a fill inside of it. So I would just go to shape style and click fill and that would fill this in with the actual rigid or with a white color so that um, so that you can see it even though it's overlapping here. So in this case probably what I could do is I could just come in here and I could select all of this and I could just kind of move it over. So you might want to think about grouping all of the different things within each one of these but then you could do the same thing where you could come in and you could add notes and that sort of thing. And if you notice this should have come into scale. So in this case, I'm gonna adjust my dimension style to fractional inches. And you can adjust how precise that is with the drop downs in here, but you can see how this actually came in to scale and layout is reading that scale and it'll allow you to add things like dimensions in here. So you could do the same thing over here with your brick. So you could just kind of make a copy. And then all I did is I just moved the point that it's measuring from over here. So you can see how this is three and five eighths inch face brick. And I'm just gonna move these up a little bit. And then you could do the same thing where you just hold the control key and click and drag across here to use this detail again. And then you could come in here and you could just adjust this again. So this would be metal coping elevation, or really it would probably be, we'll just call it metal coping detail. So it might be metal coping section or whatever, but you would probably come in here and you would adjust your detail name. And then you would also add your scale in here. So one and a half inches, equals one foot zero inches. And so you can see how you, you could bring in your details if you model them within SketchUp in kind of the same way that you would bring in a floor plan or an elevation view. And then the other thing you could do in SketchUp 2018, I don't know if you could do this in the previous versions or not. I think you had to draw these within SketchUp itself, but now you've got this option in your tray for make scale drawing. And so what you could do is you could click on the button for make scale drawing. You could pick a scale. So in this case, I might do one and a half inches equals one foot. And you can see how you get this note in here that says click to start drawing at scale one and a half inches equals one foot. And you could actually come in here and you could actually draw two scale details. So in this case, let's say I wanted to draw a thick and slab detail. I could just come in here and draw this with layouts drawing tools. And you can see how I'm kind of coming in here just splitting these lines. But you can see how this gives me this kind of thickened slab view. Well, what I can do is I can add a pattern fill to this. So in this case, I could go into my pattern fills and I could add a fill for uh, cast in place concrete. Then I could also come in here and I could use like the freehand tool or something like that. 
along with the line tool to kind of draw out a shape for where the ground would be and then I could add like an earth detail, that sort of thing. So then you could come in here and you could dimension this out. So you could come in here and you could dimension this out off to the side and add your notes and everything else. So you can just manually draw all this stuff in um, using layout. And I will say I am not the biggest fan of the of drawing this stuff in and layout. I just, I, I don't really like the way that everything inferences and I find it a little bit a little bit complex to do that, but you can definitely do that now. You can draw all this stuff to scale. So then you can just come down here and you could just um, do the same thing where you come in here and you adjust your detail names and everything else on this sheet. So that's another option. And then the last option I'm gonna talk about real quick is you could also come in here and you could kind of do a hybrid between your details like this. And you could also come in and you could draw on top of them. So like, let's say for example, that I didn't wanna show this block material like maybe I just wanted this to be shaded and I realize I'm not doing the best job of tracing this but what I could do is I could draw over this with a layout item and then I could add a pattern fill inside of that to create kind of a hybrid view so if for whatever reason you wanted to show this as hatched as opposed to showing it as the block you could also come in here and you could add that on top of this so there's a lot of different ways to draw details in layout. Like I said, I'm gonna to link to a couple of videos from Nick Sonder, um, which are very helpful as well. So that's where I'm gonna wrap up this video. Leave a comment below and let me know what you thought. Um, are you doing details this way? Is there a different way that you're doing details in layout? I just love having that SketchUp conversation with you guys. Um, if you remember, I do have more resources on layout at the sketchupessentials.com slash layout. So if you're looking for more of that information, that's a great place to go. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. If you like what I'm doing on this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Every little bit helps, even if it's only a dollar a month, so make sure to check out that link in the notes down below. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.